हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर सिद्धार्थ सुराना आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग गुड और मैं तो हमेशा मस्त रहता हूं वेलकम टू द आरटीपी लेक्चर फॉर सीए फाइनल डायरेक्ट टैक्स मे 24 अटेम्प्ट आई नो यू गाइस हैव बीन वेटिंग फॉर इट फॉर अ व्हाइल बट आई हैव बीन ऑक्युपाइड विद अदर थिंग्स सो दिस आरटीपी लेक्चर इज बीइंग डन टुडे एंड वेरी सून आई नो यू ऑल आर वेटिंग फॉर दैट आल्सो द अमेंडमेंट कम रिवीजन लेक्चर्स आर अपलोडेड अप टू अ सर्टेन एक्सटेंट ऑन द एसएस प्रो एडुकेयर ऐप फर्स्ट लेक्चर वाज ऑन YouTube all other lectures were on the ss pro educare app under free courses but you all are waiting for the last uh, set of lectures that is your uh, tds pgvp capital gain etc don't worry very soon those lectures are also going to be available only and only at one place ss pro educare app empowering the pro in you this rtp that we are doing is uh, basically divided into mcqs and subjective questions uh, already our mcq book covers more question than anybody else in the country so does our additional question bank but every time institute comes up with this rtp they bring a good new variety of questions so we should be doing them uh, the new case laws that are released in the form of judicial updates that we cover in a case law lecture which we do only with our students who have taken our full course crash course or recorded uh, lectures uh, so the classroom students will be getting the case law lecture in class itself and the recording students will be getting it in the app wherever you have access to the other lectures uh, in that the judicial updates will be covered then one more thing released by icai is something called statutory updates the recent circulars it is available on the bos knowledge portal the statutory updates only the circulars it is my humble advice and request that you should be going through the statutory updates just a plain reading is going to be sufficient you don't have to you know read it in too much detail or try to memorize anything a plain reading is also going to be sufficient so please make sure you go through that because a couple of things from that circular is also going to be uh, tested a couple of things are also going to be tested in this uh, uh, rtp discussion as far as the mcqs in the rtp are concerned we will be having detailed discussion because you all don't have solutions so i have solved all the mcqs and the solutions are also going to be shown to you as far as the subjective descriptive questions are concerned they are already solved already you have access to the solution a uh, very quickly we will discuss on what uh, topic or concept they are based but our main focus is going to be our mcqs uh, also uh, the language of uh, this rtp the delivery language is majorly going to be english only considering all my students of uh, south by the way all those who are watching from south and liking the fact that english lectures are being conducted for you thok dijiye like thok dijiye like thok dijiye hit like share subscribe comment never miss an update watch till the and acha by the way this reminds me that you also please watch till the end because at the end i have to uh, tell you about a couple of updates uh, that i have to cover our lectures were done a little earlier so there are a couple of updates which i have to give to you i am going to be talking about them and covering them at the end of this lecture okay so uh, majorly it will be english only but uh, thoda bahut hindi idhar udhar jidhar bhi required hoga udhar we will be using i will not hesitate in doing that but you are going to understand everything so don't worry without wasting any time we first go to the uh, mcqs that have been given to us in the rtp the first two mcqs are case scenario based mcqs in the first question we have got uh, uh, five first case scenario we have got oh no six questions we have so question 1 2 3 4 5 6 is our case scenario one and then in case scenario two we have got uh, 7 8 9 10 11 five questions so first 11 questions are two case scenarios two stories basically and then we have uh, i think uh, two 12 and 13 two stand alone individual mcqs thereafter they are all descriptive subjective questions with which you already have access to your solution so it is not going to be very very difficult for you very quickly we come to the case scenario if you remember if you know you know it is like that if you remember during our regular lectures also i have been telling you that whenever you are solving the case scenario first of all you should be having immense practice of mcqs mainly because mcqs decide whether you have studied things or no if you have uh, been able to solve the mcq mcq tests you from start to end everything the moment they ask you total income you need to do everything the moment they ask you total tax you need to know everything from the first chapter to the last chapter you need to know everything if you are able to solve mcqs that is only the real test whether you are prepared for taxation because in tax what happens they test you in the depth of the provision and most students who have the habit of fast track learning fast learning crash learning you know they don't have the knowledge of the detailing of the provision which sometimes uh, 
prejudicially affects you when your uh, scoring of marks in examination is concerned. So, I strongly hope and believe that uh, you all have done your uh, MCQ thoroughly. And there is one more trick which I would like to share. You know, when they ask you such a long story case scenario, you will be having minimum two case scenario based out of 30 marks. So, how are you going to approach and uh, manage? What is going to be the system of approach? It's a trick. Okay. The trick is that after they give you the long story, they will ask you some questions. Very quickly, you go through the questions. Of course, answers you'll come to know only after you uh, go through the case scenario but quickly go through the questions so that when you are reading the case you have idea about which data you have to take seriously take seriously for example first question is is hdfc bank required to collect tax at source now there is a question on tcs is axis bank required to collect tax at source that's again tcs is tcs required to be collected so again tcs does make your trip required to collect TCS? So, again, four questions are on TCS concept only. Four questions are on the TCS concept. So, out of uh, four questions, we already out of total six, four, we already have one uh, TCS. What is the total income of Mr. Akhil? So, there may be some assessee called Akhil. Assuming he has shifted out of the default tax regime. Assume he has shifted out of the default tax regime now this is one thing i think i must have told you this in the uh, first revision come amendment lecture also uh, once again a repeat that whenever we are talking about individuals the new tax regime is covered under 115 bac as per a very very big amendment in 115 bac the moment they mention default regime that means you have to calculate as per default has now become new see till last year by default you were in old and you have to specifically exercise the option of new but the change that has taken place here now by, by default you will be new so every time they mention default 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 that means as per new and by chance they make something like this opt out opt out of default so that is going to be old regime what have they said assume he has shifted out of the default tax regime that means he does not want to take the new regime default means new out of default means Old. Be careful, they will be using these words in your exam. Default is going to be new regime and out of the default regime is going to be old regime. Okay, And what will be the amount of tax? Of course, you calculate income for him, automatically you compute tax, but in the manner most beneficial, which also means that you have to calculate old and new both. Because after you calculate both, you know which is beneficial. If you calculate only once, you may not know what is beneficial. Okay. So, yes, we have to calculate old and new regime both as we have understood. Now, when we do the reading, we know that majorly it is on TCS. One is income, one is tax calculation. So, we will get a better idea about how to read the case scenario. The following details pertain to Mr. Sahil and his best friend Akhil. Remember, for Akhil, they have asked total income and tax. For Sahil, they are only asking about the TCS provision. Last two questions are only on Akhil. These things you will read effectively if you know the questions in advance, which is why I give you the trick of reading the question advance okay so mr sahil amount remitted to his elder son arav who is pursuing two year mba program from columbia university usa out of own savings to hdfc bank and authorized dealer under lrs over means he has remitted money to his son for pursuing mba program what are the purposes first tuition fees ka 350000 5th july to meet the day to day expense of study purposes so it's not loan huh? it's not loan 10th may Achha. Look at how they have framed, how bad they have been with you. They have not given to you the transactions in a chronological order. They have given you the July transaction first, then they are giving May, then they are giving September of 90,000 and then they are giving 1st Jan 135,000. So, if we speak chronologically, first it is 10th May, then it is 5th July, then it is 29th September, then it is 1st January. This is the chronology of, the, this is the order in which the transactions have taken place. Next, he has also remitted through excess bank and authorized dealer under LRS towards tuition fees. Now, this is October. So, this will be somewhere between the September transaction and the January transaction. Then, this is 10 January. So, this is after this last transaction. And both of them are towards loan, loan towards tuition fees of education. And finally, to meet day-to-day -day expenses, again, 1st July, they have given 1,50,000. So, if you understand, first transaction is this, first May. 
Second transaction that has taken place is 1st July through Axis Bank. Third transaction that has taken place is through HDFC, 5th July. Fourth transaction that has taken place is this September, 29th September. Fifth transaction is 11th October. Sixth transaction is uh, for 1st January comes first of course and 7th transaction is 10th January. They have given this in a very very ridiculous part because they don't want you to get funds. Let's get this clear. Okay. These are the various remittances. To complete formalities of admission, Mr. Sahil visited USA from 10th April to 13th April. Okay. So, all this comes before the first transaction. What do I call it? Transaction 0 or minus 1. Which he purchased a tour package from gate to travel for a foreign tour operator and remits money on 5th of April. 5th of April ko means this becomes the first transaction. All other transaction becomes sub, all other transactions become subsequent transactions. The amounts are of course given to international travel tickets, hotel accommodation are included in the said package. Now, this is a very important discussion. Please pay attention because this is based on a circular under statutory updates. And we have never had the opportunity to discuss this in the past, so we are discussing it. Here, he has furnished an undertaking containing details of earlier remittances to HDFC Bank and Axis Bank and also furnished pen to the authorized dealer and to the seller of tour package. First remittance was gate to travel. Be clear about this. First remittance was gate to travel. Then came HDFC and Axis. Of course, first transaction was HDFC for 10th May and then Axis also happened 1st July. As per a circular, government is now saying, Sometimes you may be remitting money through different authorized dealers. You know, whoever is giving you the best rate at that point. Of time. So, what you should do is, if supposingly I remit 5 lakh rupees through excess, then I go and remit 3 lakh rupees from HDFC, then I have to inform HDFC about the 5 lakh already remitted. Means, HDFC will not take my transaction value as 3 lakh, HDFC will take 8 lakh. The reason is, other than tour package, we have a threshold of 7 lakh for no TCS. Other than tour package, so that tour package, uh, uh, if you remove where you have to apply mandatory TCS for other cases, when you apply 7 lakh ka threshold, you are not going to get that 7 lakh threshold for every individual authorized dealer. You can't take 7 lakh threshold from HDFC, then Excess, then any other bank. So, like that, every time you want to remit every 7 lakh, you do from a different bank. So, you furnish the detail. And whichever bank you furnish the detail, it will consider your earlier remittances to check whether 7 lakh limit is exhausted. Once that is exhausted, subsequent, what is the TCS? As we are aware, there is an amendment. Also, education loan 0.5%, other magic, medical and education purposes 5%, any other purpose 20%. We know about all the amendments that have taken place from 1st of October. But what you need to know is threshold of 7 will be taken now onwards on a total basis. Some of the MCQs in my MCQ book have been solved by taking threshold 7 lakh separately for individual uh, authorized dealer till the time the circular was not released. But now you be careful if the details have been furnished, so we will have to take the threshold on a total basis that 7 lakh. That is why this statutory update discussion was relevant. Apart from that, if we talk about Akhil, Mr. Akhil, an Indian citizen, got a job offer from a Dubai company at 10,500 dirham, AED, dirham, Dubai ka currency. He left on 29th March, so that is before the financial year started. Huh? And joined on 1st April. So, during the year, in the beginning, he was not here. He returned to India on 15th December on leave for 15 days. So, he is not coming for permanent settlement or job. He is on a visit. On 23rd December, he went on 7 days tour to Bali with his wife and son. So, his stay in India was only from 15 to 23. Both days will be counted. Thereafter, he directly went to Dubai with his wife and son. On 16th December, he had purchased a tour package for Bali from Make Your Tip, an Indian tour operator, which he paid 7,50,000 towards flight ticket and hotel accommodation. During 23-24, he has business income of 4,20,000 from a retail shop in India. So, that's his Indian income. He may be having local Dubai income, but we have Indian income 4,20,000 and FD interest of 1,20,000 and 8,000 respectively. So, basically, he is not crossing that 15 lakh ka threshold to make him deemed a resident or anything. He is not liable to pay tax in Dubai. Citizen of India? Not a tax resident anywhere, but 15 lakh has to be crossed to make your deemed resident. In case they ask you residential status, I think I am getting an idea about at least what is the residential status. Because residential status will determine whether we have to take only your Indian income or your foreign income, what we have to take. Accordingly, we will be able to decide. Okay. From the above information, choose the most appropriate answer. HDFC bank required to collect tax at source by Mr. Sahil. And if so, what is the amount to be collected? So, what are the 
रेमिटेंस इज थ्रू एच डी एफ सी थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वन लैख ट्वेंटी नाइनटी एंड वन लैख थर्टी फाइव बिफोर दैट ही हैज ऑलरेडी रेमिटेड दिस वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ऑल्सो बिफोर ही स्टार्टेड नो फर्स्ट वॉज दिस वन लैख ट्वेंटी बिकॉज दैट इज टेंथ ऑफ मे देर आफ्टर ही हैज रेमिटेड वन लैख फिफ्टी फ्रॉम यर एंड ही हैज फर्निश द डिटेल देन वी कम बैक यर तो बेसिकली वी चेक दैट ही हैज अचीव हिज फर्स्ट सेवन लैख हाउ लेट्स कम एंड चेक फर्स्ट टेंथ में फर्स्ट जुलाई एंड फिफ्थ जुलाई आर इज फर्स्ट थ्री ट्रांजेक्शन तो द थ्री ट्रांजेक्शन आर थ्री फिफ्टी वन फिफ्टी एंड वन ट्वेंटी रिस्पेक्टिवली चेक कर लें टेंथ में इज योर फर्स्ट ट्रांजेक्शन वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड देन यू हैव फर्स्ट जुलाई वन लैख फिफ्टी दैट टू लैख सेवेंटी एंड यू हैव थ्री लैख फिफ्टी सो दैट टोटल विल अमाउंट टू सिक्स लैख ट्वेंटी टिल नाउ योर सेवन लैख इज नॉट एक्सॉस्टेड बट वी आर टेकिंग द टोटल ऑफ ऑल दी पेमेंट आफ्टर फिफ्थ ऑफ जुलाई the next payment that has taken place fifth of july was your transaction number 3 next payment is 29 september where it is 90 so 620 is already done we have remaining only 80000 threshold remove that and finally from this 90 we have to take 10000 cut ecs so we have From the first three transactions, utilize six lakh twenty from our seven lakh threshold. From the fourth transaction of twenty ninth September, we have to utilize eighty thousand only. It is becoming total of seven ten. So seven lakh ka threshold is over. Ten thousand will attract TCS. Now go and check what is the purpose of this. This was study purposes. Twenty ninth September. Okay. So. Education other than this is not loan no check करो to meet day to day expense for study purposes education but other than loan for loan we have zero point five but for education other than loan we have five percent correct है so five hundred rupees आएगा thereafter what else अभी एक बात तो please understand एक बात तो समझ लो that HDFC in this transaction has checked that your seven lakh का threshold is over so from now onwards all payments will attract tcs in fact subsequent payments of excess also now these two will also attract tcs okay so what do we have we have only this payment and this payment of hdfc which will attract tcs so 10000 ka we have already taken and 135 ke upar full 5% accordingly you will get 500 rupees from the 29 september wala transaction and 6750 From the first January wala transaction, making it a total of seven two five zero TCS of five hundred on twenty nine September and six six seven five zero on first January twenty four. That's your option C as already solved for you. So basically, let me explain one more time. Every payment that is being made is utilizing your seven. You just have to take them in chronology. Institute has made this question difficult only by not giving you the transactions in a chronology. You identify the chronology, finish seven lakh till year only six twenty is over. So in this, you still get eighty thousand threshold, and from the ten thousand year it will start. Now this ten thousand, and after this HDFC has helped you only for one more transaction. So ten thousand from year and one thirty five from year both will attract five percent as it is education other than loan, and accordingly you get five hundred and six seven five zero. respectively but we also know that now your threshold is over now is excess bank required to collect taxes so, so one thing we understand that under excess bank ka payment the first transaction was in the threshold we took that in the 7 lakh ka limit so we are left with these two 350 and this is loan towards tuition fee so what do we have first july was within first 7 lakh correct or no and the remaining two will be 0.5% 0.5% as 7 lakh ka limit is over and you have to apply this is education loan and therefore this is education loan check karo this is education loan so this 350 and this 350 both will attract 0.5 7 lakh ka threshold is over for that we have to check the total and then now we apply 0.5 0.5% all right so accordingly where do we have this 0.5 0.5 1 350000 3, that's 1750 on 11th october And one seven five zero on tenth of January. That is given to you under option C. One seven five zero, one seven five zero, 
ऑप्शन सी नेक्स्ट इज टैक्स रिक्वायर्ड टू बी कलेक्टेड एट सोर्स ऑन द अमाउंट रेमिटेड टू टूर पैकेज इफ सो वॉट इज द अमाउंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नो दैट इन टूर पैकेज देर इज नो थ्रेश होल्ड अवेलेबल सो डायरेक्टली एंड देर इज दिस अमेंडमेंट ऑल्सो दैट इज टेकन प्लेस दैट फाइव का ट्वेंटी परसेंट दैट इज टेकन प्लेस बट इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दिस टूर पैकेज विदाउट एनी थ्रेश होल्ड दिस वॉज डन एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द ईयर एंड बिकॉज इट इज एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द ईयर नो थ्रेश होल्ड दिस इज अपू थर्टी एथ सेप्टेंबर सो फुल फाइव लैक ट्वेंटी दैट यू हैव रेमिट फाइव लैक ट्वेंटी यू हैव रेमिटेड उसके ऊपर वी विल बी अपलाइंग फाइव परसेंट वी गेट ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड रुपीज टूर पैकेज के ऊपर ऑप्शन ए के अंदर वी विल बी सिलेक्टिंग ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड सो येस टी सी एस ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड इज गोइंग टू बी अट्रेक्टेड डज मेक योर ट्रिप रिक्वायर टू कलेक्ट टैक्स ऑन द अमाउंट रिसीव फॉर टूर पैकेज फॉर बाली नाउ सी मिस्टर अखिल केम यर ओनली फॉर फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी थर्ड देर आफ्टर ही लेफ्ट फ्रॉम बाली एंड फ्रॉम बाली ओनली वेंट बैक टू दुबई दैट वॉज हिस्ट स्टोरी वाइल ही वॉज इन इंडिया फॉर दोज एट डेज ही हैड परचेज दैट टूर पैकेज सो फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन सेवेंटीन एटीन ही वॉज यर ओनली फॉर दैट लिमिटेड पीरियड एंड दिस इज अगेन बेस्ड ऑन वन ऑफ द सर्क्यूलर दैट वेन अ नॉन रेसिडेंट इज बाइंग टूर पैकेज देर विल बी नोटिस दिस इज अ सर्क्यूलर बेस्ड स्टैचुटरी अपडेट विच आई टोल्ड यू रीड वंस इफ यू रीड वंस दैट मच इज ऑल्सो enough so as you take this as an update or amendment when a non resident will buy a tour package we will not collect tcs because he is here for a temporary period he is buying the tour package and going away he can't stay here for taking his tcs refund we are granting him this facility this is based on that circular so you should know there will be no tax that will be applicable finally they are asking you total income and tax of akil so now the tcs part is going to be over under the old regime akil has got only pgbp and FD interest, but he will not get ET TTA ka deduction because he is not a senior citizen. So that will be zero. His total income is going to be five lakh forty thousand under the old taxation regime. See, he is non-resident, so only Indian income is being concerned or considered. So five lakh forty thousand is going to be his income. And now for tax liability, you will have to do both. But as far as my logic and common sense is uh, uh, concerned, let me. make you understand there is only one mistake that you can make here you may be thinking sir in new regime rebate is now allowed up to 7 lakh rupees so wow his income is in any case less than 7 lakh so rebate is allowed only to residents and remember akil is non resident that is the reason we have not taken his dubai ka income okay so in old regime we'll calculate 40000 ka 20% and up to 5 lakh we have uh, 12500 we add 4% we get 21 320 under new regime under New regime, we have three lakh ka basic exemption and two forty eight ka five percent plus four percent. That's twelve eight ninety six rounded off to twelve thousand nine hundred. And therefore, the best uh, best of them is going to be your option B. That is how we are going to approach our MCQs. I hope you have understood that if you know the questions in advance, how easy or smooth is it becomes for you to approach your MCQs. Okay. Now let's go to case scenario number two. Let's have a look at our second case scenario as i explained the trick the system should be you should go through first the questions this will give you an idea this is charitable trust ke upar ka, ka case scenario charitable trust ka chapter has undergone huge number of amendments like always like every year big headache it has become why are they even giving any tax benefit just say that charitable trust has to pay tax so many conditions blah 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 but some of these questions are direct test on the recent amendment so be very very careful first the question whatever is the name seva niketan ne meva niketan whatever it is it wants to claim exemption in 1023c for educational and hospital ha we know 1023c mein medical and educational institutions are covered even if they are registered trust they will get it but provided that uh, total turnover is up to 5 Crore and that total applies on both education and medical activities. So we'll see. Ten twenty three C is available or not? What amount of corpus donation would not form a part of the total income? See, normally corpus donations are not at all a part of our income, but sometimes it is likely or possible that we have misused or misutilized our corpus. So for that, as a punishment, that corpus donation is going to be taxable. So apart from that, corpus donation is not going to be a part of total income. So we know that. Next. What would be the amount of specified income taxable at thirty percent? Whenever we make any kind of violation, etc., with our accumulations or our uh, income when misutilization, then that is a violation, and for that we have this, uh, uh, you know, benefit of trustee, author, founder, also or accumulations misused. So we will identify that income data is going to be given to us. Uh, 
what would be the amount considered as application of income for the trust excluding 15 percent see what do we do total income minus 15 percent from that we take application so that 15 percent you don't count other than that how much is going to be considered based on whatever are the expenses done we will see which expenses allowed which expenses not allowed we have so many conditions over there expense from corpus not allowed expense from loan not allowed but later if you repay the corpus or you repay the loan it is going to be allowed but this amendment came from 21 22 so if it is repayment of 21 22 or later so it will be allowed if it is earlier year so it will not be allowed a charitable trust revise so everything is going to be bouncer option method okay MCQ will be option. You can do anything. Who is a student? Okay. Bloody hell. Okay. What next? Seva Niketan claims that anonymous donations received during financial year 23-24 are not liable to be taxed. Is the claim of the trust valid? If it is only religious trust, then maybe. Or partly religious, partly charitable and you receive for uh, other than education or medical purpose, then maybe. But we will have to see. Okay, so it's only uh, five questions here. Next is on uh, TDS of withdrawals from bank, which is also an amendment based question. But uh, we've got an idea about what uh, the case scenario to is. So, Seva Niket, that was the name given. Charitable trust registered under 12 AB runs an educational institution which is solely engaged in education and hospital for treatment of persons suffering from mental disorder. CA Walo ke liye rakha hai bhai. Philanthropic English charitable purpose Philanthropic English जाने देना भाई जाने दे English charitable purpose the South Indian students are also like के sir we were expecting lecture in English मगर ये कौन सी English है बे इससे अच्छा तो हिंदी बोल दो धर्मादा करने के लिए charity करने के लिए ये कौन सी English Philanth अच्छा छोड़ जाने दे the trust furnished the following information the total receipt of the trust for 23-24 for educational institution is 3.1 crore and hospital is 3.4. The total is 6.5, which makes it very, very clear that total 5 crore cross hai, you have threshold individually. You don't have you have sorry, you have sorry, you have uh, you don't have threshold individually. Total exceeding 5 crore, you're disqualified. So wo pehle wale question ka answer to ho gaya hai, boss. That's what a case scenario is. While it is going to be very, very difficult for you, they will always leave some room for something easy to average it out for you. Voluntary contributions, which is included, matlab, ye crore ke included. Amount to 105. Matlab, this is donation. Baki business income. So when we take donation, wo anonymous donation ka question hai na, we have to take 5% of total donation or 1 lakh, whichever is higher. Usme donation 105. Hai. It includes corpus of 55. Up to humko pata hai, we discussed it in our regular lecture that when we take 5% of total donation, we will take corpus also. 55 lakh was received for purchase of building of the trust and anonymous also. So yes. So, uh, you know, normal donation, aapke ye 75 minus kar do, to normal donation, aapko mil jayega aapka 30 lakh rupees. However, when we take 5% of total donation for anonymous donation ka tax calculation purpose, we'll take 105. Only we'll not take the other income. During 23-24, computer were purchased for 80 lakh rupees. So, that is an application of income. Computer agar kharida hai, to 80 lakh ka wo application of income to lena padega. But, corpus use kiya. Abhe, corpus was given for building and you have used for computer. This utilization. So, this application nahi consider kare. Now, you understand that what amount of corpus will not be taxable? Vaise to, your entire 55 should not be taxable. But if you misutilize, then it will benefit. Nahi loan ke paise se, matlab 80 lakh ka computer hai. Usme se loan ka paise use kiya. So, again, that is not going to be taken. Voluntary contribution ka man, of course, will be taken. Corpus donation received during current year are invested in. Jo 55 mila. Building ke mila. Na. Till the time you don't use for building, what should you do? Okay. एक तो आपने कंप्यूटर ही खरीद लिया 30 का व्हाट एल्स हैव यू डन फॉर द रिमेनिंग 25 यू अंडरस्टैंड कॉर्पस रिसीव्ड इज 55 उसमें 30 का तो मिस यूटिलाइजेशन ऑलरेडी डन अब 25 रिमेनिंग पोस्ट ऑफिस अलाउड अंडर 115 कैनरा बैंक एफडी अलाउड बट एनबीएफसी के पास रहता तो अगेन दैट बिकम्स अ मिस यूटिलाइजेशन बिकॉज़ इट इज नॉट एन अलाउड इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर कंप्यूटर का 30 एंड ये एनबीएफसी का 10 इट बिकम्स इफेक्टिवली अ मिस यूटिलाइजेशन during uh, deposited 15 lakh towards post office saving account which were utilized for purchase of building during 2021 and 21 22 out of corpus fund of 10 lakh and 5 lakh respectively matlab understand kiya humne in the past years 2021 and 21 22 apne corpus fund ko use kiya tha 10 lakh and 5 lakh respectively building ke in the past we have used money from corpus this year what we have done 
returned that corpus. Correct? So, when you use money from corpus, उस टाइम पे एप्लीकेशन नहीं होगा फ्यूचर में जब आप वापस दोगे उस टाइम पे होगा करेक्ट बट दैट रूल केम फ्रॉम 21 22 प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट रूल केम फ्रॉम 21 22 मतलब जो 20 21 में मैंने 10 लाख रुपया यूज किया उसको मैंने तबे एप्लीकेशन ले ली 21 22 में जो 5 लाख यूज किया 5 लाख रुपीस एट दैट टाइम आई हैव नॉट टेकन दैट एज एप्लीकेशन सो टुडे व्हेन आई रीपेड आई विल बी गेटिंग इट एज एप्लीकेशन रिसेंटली देयर आर दिस ईयर मोर अमेंडमेंट दैट इट हैज टू बी डन विद इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स दिस इज विद इन फाइव इयर्स बट अंडरस्टैंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन का तो दैट टाइम ओनली वी आर टेकन एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज कॉर्पस और लोन के पैसे से एप्लीकेशन विल नॉट बी अलाउड का अमेंडमेंट केम फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी तो पास्ट का वी विल नॉट कंसिडर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू वी विल बी कंसिडर अमाउंट पेड टू अनदर रजिस्टर्ड ट्रस्ट अंडर ट्वेल्व ए बी बाई वे ऑफ डोनेशन इज टेन लैक्स अमाउंट पेड टू अदर ट्रस्ट इज अलाउड बट इयर ऑल्सो दर इज एन अमेंडमेंट ओनली एटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ दैट अमाउंट विल and out of the set 2 lakh are corpus to so, corpus to allowed in it has to be non corpus to so, 2 lakh to nikal gaya 8 lakh ka bhi only 85 will be allowed kyunki receiving trust bhi 15% exemption that that's also current term okay 6 lakh being the amount set apart in 22 23 by the trust for charitable purpose is utilized in 23 24 for making donation to other charitable trust 11 subsection 2 is accumulation accumulation mein se 6 lakh rupya aapne other trust ko donation karne ke liye यूज कर लिया दैट मीन इट इज मिस यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ योर अक्यूमुलेशन एंड यू आर गोइंग टू बी ऑफ कोर्स लाइबल फॉर दैट थर्टी परसेंट का टैक्स रेट ओके फ्रॉम द गिवन इन्फॉर्मेशन चूज द मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट आंसर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन साइन निकेतन वॉन्ट्स टू अवेल एक्जेशन अंडर टेन ट्वेंटी सी इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड हॉस्पिटल बोर्ड तो हमको पता है नहीं मिलेगा ये इट कैन डू सो नो नो इट कैन नॉट डू सो सिंस इट इज रजिस्टर्ड नो प्लीज पे अटेंशन इंस्टीट्यूट इज टाइम टू प्ले विथ यू रजिस्टर्ड ट्रस्ट डज नॉट गेट सेक्शन टेन एक्सेप्शन लेकिन टेन ट्वेंटी थ्री सी इज एन एक्सेप्शन तो ये वाला पॉइंट भी रॉन्ग है करेक्ट है द रीजन इज दैट दैट टोटल आपको इंडिविजुअली पांच पांच करोड़ का लिमिट नहीं मिलेगा द लिमिट इज ऑन दी टोटल एंड द टोटल इज एक्सीडेड फाइव करोड़ रुपीज एंड देर फॉर दिस बिकम्स योर आंसर टेन ट्वेंटी थ्री इज अलाउड टू रजिस्टर्ड ट्रस्ट बट फाइव करोड़ लिमिट इज ऑन टोटल एंड देर फॉर ओनली सी इज द रीजन वाई इट विल नॉट बी अलाउड वॉट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ कॉर्पस डोनेशन दैट विल नॉट फॉर्म अ पार्ट ऑफ टोटल इनकम देखिए वैसे तो फुल कॉर्पस डोनेशन इज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ इनकम बट हैव बी डन मिस यूटिलाइजेशन चेक करते हैं चेक करते हैं टोटल रिसीव इज फिफ्टी फाइव फ्रॉम दैट आई हैव मिस यूज फॉर कंप्यूटर थर्टी लैख रुपीज एंड एन बी एफ सी में रॉन्ग मोड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट इज टेन लैख दैट मीन्स ओनली दिस मच इज द करेक्ट यूसेज ऑफ कॉर्पस ओनली दिस मच पे यू वॉन्ट बी पेइंग टैक्स मिस यूटिलाइजेशन वाली सब अमाउंट के ऊपर यू विल बी पेइंग टैक्स अकॉर्डिंगली फिफ्टीन लैख विच इज योर ऑप्शन सी बिकम्स योर आंसर देखो पहले से क्वेश्चन रीड किया तो इट बिकेम इजी फॉर यू What would be the amount of specified income taxable? One by one, we have to scan through the question and identify the misutilizations. Computer का misutilization, ten lakh का आपका NBFC में deposit किया, that is a non-specified investment and accumulation. जो आपने last year accumulation किया था, that last year का accumulation you have now given as donation to other trust. So that effectively makes it a total violation of forty-six lakh, and this amount will be taxable at thirty percent. Forty-six lakh is given to us in option B. What would be the amount considered as application for the trust for previous year twenty three twenty four? हमको देखना है कौन सा कौन सा considered जैसे computer का thirty misutilization from corpus नहीं होगा loan का पैसा नहीं होगा but twenty five होगा that donation to other trust that you have given from accumulation that is misutilization वो नहीं होगा but the day to day donation that you have given ten lakh that you have to consider इसमें से you remove two and remaining का consider only eighty five percent जो corpus आपने repay किया but only of twenty one twenty Not of 2021 because that you have taken. ये सब चीजों को note करके you will get this. Computer का 80 lakh but corpus का and loan का पैसा not considered. So normal वाला 25. Restoration of corpus only of 2122 because 2021 का आपने claim कर लिया वो 5 lakh and donation to other trust 10 minus 2 क्योंकि corpus तो allowed नहीं रहेगा और वो 8 का भी 85 percent 6.8 that is 36.8 is going to be your allowable. डिडक्शन 36.8 आपका आंसर रहेगा जिसको वो 85 परसेंट क्लिक नहीं होना मोस्ट पीपल विल बी गेटिंग द आंसर ऑफ 38 38 लाख आपका आंसर आ रहा होगा बिकॉज यू मस्ट हैव टेकन 8 लाख ओवर ईयर तो यू अंडरस्टूड व्हाट द मिस्टेक इज द टेस्ट वाज ऑन द अमेंडमेंट दोस ऑफ यू हू ट्राइड इट ऑन योर ओन नेक्स्ट इज योर अनोनिमस डोनेशन एग्जाम अब देखो ये एजुकेशन और मेडिकल ट्रस्ट है इसको एजुकेशन मेडिकल पर्पस के लिए मिला है तो अनोनिमस डोनेशन के ऊपर टैक्स तो लगेगा बट रिमेंबर फुल अमाउंट के ऊपर वी विल नॉट अप्लाई थर्टी परसेंट अनोनिमस डोनेशन रिसीव बाई असिस 20 lakh. Usme se we'll give this deduction. 5% of total donation. 
सो दैट वन जीरो फाइव का फाइव परसेंट फाइव ट्वेंटी फॉर वन लैक विच एवर इज हायर इसको माइनस करके जो बैलेंस बचा उसके ऊपर विल अप्लाई थर्टी परसेंट देखिए वैसे तो इसके ऊपर सेस ऑल्सो विल कम बट इफ यू ऑब्जर्व एमसीक्यूज के खासियत है दे ऑलवेज स्टार्ट बाई से ये भी आपको बताना जरूरी है ओके आई वॉन्ट टू शो यू समथिंग That when they ask you MCQs, they always tell you choose the most appropriate answer. Most appropriate. ये ये समझना जरूरी है. Please understand. Most appropriate answer. Now out of the options that they have given you here, these three are wrong, and therefore ये हमारा answer. Question number eleven का answer D. उस वजह से आ रहा है. Please understand. What I want you to understand is supposedly one of the other options में four forty two five hundred plus HEC was given. In case. तो हम लोग वो लेते आउट ऑफ दीज फोर विच इज दी बेस्ट आंसर एक्चुअली ये रॉन्ग है सच बोलू तो ये रॉन्ग है बिकॉज यू डोंट पे बेसिक टैक्स यू टू एड सेस तो लॉजिकली स्पीकिंग और लीगली स्पीकिंग दिस इज रॉन्ग बट आउट ऑफ ऑल द फोर रॉन्ग आंसर इट इज लाइक चूजिंग योर पॉलिटिशियन सब गंदे हु इज द लीस्ट डोरिटी ऑन दैट बेसिस वी आर चूजिंग दिस मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट आंसर बाकी के कंपेरिजन में तो फिर भी थोड़ा सा अच्छा है एवरी टाइम वी चूज अवर लीडर्स बोला गंदे तो सब है ये थोड़ा कम गंदा है दैट्स हाउ यू अप्रोच अगर देर वॉज अनदर ऑप्शन फोर फोर्टी टू फाइव हंड्रेड प्लस सेस देन वी वुड टेक ऑन दैट बट एज आई मैं यूर ऑल्सो मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट एज पर द गिवन ऑप्शन इट हैज टू बी फोर फोर्टी टू फाइव हंड्रेड ओके सो दैट वॉज अवर सेकेंड केस सीन एडियो नेक्स्ट थर्ड सो टू केस सीन एडियो इलेवन क्वेश्चन आर ओवर वी हैव ओनली टू नाउ As far as your uh, MCQs are concerned, ABC Bank provides the following information relating to cash withdrawals by its two customers. One is Mr. Arjun, whose saving account is Cooperative Society ka current account. Hai. Okay, so this is also test on that amendment. I am sure you are aware that in case of Cooperative Society, a one crore ka limit, three crore ka limit, ho gaya. So going by the data that is given, you know, eighty, eighty one, sixty one, seventy three, somewhere about two thirty, two fifty seven. But total mark le. The total will be say I must have written on the tab, but 68 plus 85 as a show off. करने के लिए that I am solving in front of you. Plus 57 the total cash withdrawal 290. जान दो मेरा फोन दिखेगा. 298 cooperative society का total withdrawal is within the three crore का threshold. But if we talk about Mr. Arjun, so that's 20 plus 25, 45, 45 plus. Uh, match भूल गया यार. 45 plus 25, 70, 70 and 35, 105 का टोटल आपका विड्रॉल है तो वी नो दैट वन लैक वन करोड़ क्रॉस किया तो टू परसेंट लगता है बट वी ऑल्सो हैव टू चेक फाइलर और नॉन फाइलर विच ऑलवेज दे विल गिव यू कॉपरेटिव सोसाइटी रेगुलरली फाइल्स आर वाई हाव एवर अर्जुन हैज नॉट फाइल फॉर द लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स मतलब अभी अर्जुन का क्या होगा ट्वेंटी लैक के बाद में टू परसेंट और वन करोड़ के बाद का जो बैलेंस है दैट फाइव परसेंट दिस वी आर सॉल्विंग एज पर आई सी ए आई लॉजिकली स्पीकिंग You should be applying on the entire amount, but ICI सी आई ये फॉलो करता है कि वो एक्सेस के ऊपर मतलब फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी लैख के ऊपर नहीं करेगा ट्वेंटी से वन करोड़ के बीच में एटी लैख के ऊपर दे विल अपलाई टू परसेंट एंड ऑन दैट लास्ट फाइव लैख देर बी टी डी एस देखो कॉपरेटिव सोसाइटी पे तो नो ही नो ही रहेगा तो वेर एवर दे आर सेंग बोथ के लिए येस 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 उधर यू वी नो दैट दिस थ्री आर रॉन्ग तो वेदर यू सॉल्व इट और नो इतना कॉमन सेंस के साथ में यू शुड बी डूइंग दैट कॉपरेटिव सोसाइटी का तो नहीं होगा खाली अर्जुन का चेक कर लेते हैं 185 एटी फाइव इज कमिंग और नॉट कमिंग कॉपरेटिव सोसाइटी न्यू लिमिट थ्री करोड़ सोनो टी डी अमेंडमेंट है अर्जुन का 80 लाख का 2 परसेंट एंड 5 लाख का 5 परसेंट करोगे तो यू गेट 185, एटी फाइव विच इज मैचिंग योर आंसर एंड अकॉर्डिंगली दिस बिकम्स लेडीज एंड जेंटमेन योर आंसर आई होप वी आर वेरी वेरी क्लियर ऑन दिस ऑल राइट एंड द लास्ट केस लो द लास्ट एम सी क्यू इज बेसिकली कॉम्पेंसेशन रिसीव जरा चेक करना वॉट इज अपनी टी एस्टेट has received 23 lakh as compensation from insurance company for damage to green leaves so this is not damage to your fixed asset fixed asset ka hota hai to fir wo insurance compensation of capital gain mein jata okay this is damage to your tea leaves damage in your farm it is under the view that entire insurance policy will be agriculture income examine the contention common sense se samjhiye please there is no factory dekho agar factory mein kuch bhi stock bhi agar tea business is what First, grow tree leaves in the farm. Take it to the factory and convert it into the black color powder. Farm me to, ye uh, factory me to koi activity hua hi nahi. The destruction took place in the farm itself, and the compensation also we have received for damage to the green leaves due to hailstorm in the farm only. 
और ये फिक्स एसेट नहीं है इट वॉज फिक्स एसेट तो वी वुड है कैपिटल गेन पर बट दिस इज रिसीव इन कोर्स ऑफ योर बिजनेस दैट ऑल्सो एग्रीकल्चर एक्टिविटी बिकॉज फार्म में हुआ है एंड दस द कंपनी सेंग जो भी वो बोल रही है नो पार्ट ऑफ द कॉम्पेंसेशन कैन बी अपोर्सन अंडर रूल एट एंड द एंटायर इनकम बी कंसिडर्ड एस एग्रीकल्चर इनकम क्योंकि फैक्ट्री का कोई इन्वॉल्वमेंट ही नहीं था फिक्स एसेट नहीं था योर टी लीव ओनली डिस्ट्रॉइड एंड देर फॉर जो कॉम्पेंसेशन मिला है वो इन कोर्स ऑफ योर एग्रीकल्चर एक्टिविटी मिला है अकॉर्डिंगली इट इज एग्रीकल्चर दैर इज गोइंग टू बी नो टैक्स ऑन दिस सो दैट वॉज अवर केस सीनेरियो नंबर Now, if we go to our subjective questions, first question is basically a PGBP question, which is on a company. So the initial part is very, very easy. So they have given you a company called Shubh Fragrance Limited. It is a manufacturing company. So the moment you see manufacturing uh, uh, company, you know that it is eligible for additional depreciation. Of course, eligible in the new uh, old regime, not allowed in the new regime. And net profit is given nine hundred. So this is basic PGBP. If you have the system of PGBP with you, add less, no effect, add less, no effect. You get things here. You just have to one by one ask all these adjustments. Add less, no effect. Add less, no effect. There is there there are these couple of uh, you know uh, difficult uh, things. As for example, this is payment for know how. It is debited. Abi debited hai, so you have to disallow. But you will take the depreciation deduction. And because it is acquired in November, you will take only half depreciation. Electricity charges. Iska koi forty three bhi nahi lagta. Electricity charges not covered. Even if it is unpaid, it will be allowed. So don't take. So basically. Expense debited and allowed because forty three B is not applicable. Debited and allowed, no effect. You have to follow PGBP principle for raw material. You have loss in hedging contract. It's a part of your business, so you don't need to do anything. Obviously, books ka depreciation you will have to add. Now for purchase of machinery there is loss. So this debit that you have done machine ka purchase is sixty five lakh and hedging ka two lakh ka loss. The total cost of machine will become sixty seven. So first of all, this two lakh you will have to add back. And then depreciation as per tax करने के टाइम पे एड एस पर बुक्स तो कर दिया एस पर टैक्स यूल नॉट डू ऑन सिक्सटी फाइव बट ऑन सिक्सटी सेवन प्लस दिस इज ऑल्सो डिसम्बर सो हाफ रेट हैजू बी एप्लीकेबल नॉन कॉम्पीट फीस वी हैव रिसीव इट इज अवर इनकम और ऑलरेडी क्रेडिट हो गया तो हमको कुछ नहीं करना है देन ट्वेंटी लैक इज एडवांस फॉर फोर फीचर फोर फीटेड एडवांस ये आपका इनकम फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेज है तो पीजीबीपी में लेस करके वी विल टेक इट अंडर Income from other sources, advance money forfeited. This is taxable immediately, 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 immediately under income from other sources. Uh, excess on sale of unlisted share. So PGBP में आपको इसको minus करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि आपने credit किया है. And then of course taken capital gain, normal depreciation, uh, allowable as per income taxes, thirty five lakh. ठीक है तो मतलब वो डेप्रिसिएशन का आपका डिडक्शन देन योर अनलिस्टेड शेयर्स का कॉस्ट ऑफ एक्विजिशन इज गिवन नाउ ऑब्जर्व दिस इज द मेन पार्ट दैट यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन बाकी सब तो इजी इजी पीजीबीपी का एडजस्टमेंट टोटल टर्नओवर टू इयर्स अगो वाज 282 करोड़ मतलब ओल्ड रेजिम में टैक्स 25% वी हैव टू सी 2 इयर्स अगो लास्ट ईयर का नहीं देखा वी आर इन 23 24 वी हैव टू सी दिस ओके नेक्स्ट ईयर ये टर्नओवर है कंपनी हैज मेट क्रेडिट ऑफ 20 लाख फॉर एवाई 16 17 एंड बुक प्रॉफिट इज गिवन मतलब एज ऑफ नाउ इट इज इन ओल्ड रेजिम ओनली आपका दो साल पहले का टर्नओवर इज 282. एटी टू दिस टर्न ओवर इज इलेवेंट तो करंट ईयर इनकम पे 25% सरचार्ज देख लेना वन करोड़ के बाद 7% एंड 10 करोड़ के बाद में 12% परसेंट दिस इज अ डोमेस्टिक कंपनी इसके लिए और मैट इसके ऊपर 1520 फाइव लैक्स दिया है ना तो इसके अंदर कंफ्यूज नहीं होना ओके फाइव हंड्रेड लैक इज फाइव करोड़ दिस फिफ्टीन करोड़ ट्वेंटी लैक तो आप मैट कैलकुलेशन के टाइम पे बी केयरफुल फिफ्टीन करोड़ ट्वेंटी लैक अगर आपको मैट ये बुक प्रॉफिट दिया है तो योर कैलकुलेशन ऑब्वियसली मैट में ये रहेगा फिफ्टीन परसेंट मैट ट्वेल्व परसेंट विल बी द सर चार्ज बिकॉज दस करोड़ क्रॉस किया है सेस आएगा दैट विल गिव योर मैट लाइबिलिटी सो नॉर्मल टैक्स और मैट विच एवर इज हायर मैट क्रेडिट ऑल्सो यू कैन कैलकुलेट हावे वर इन्होंने क्या बोला कंप्यूट इन द मोस्ट बेनिफिशियल मैनर टू बी असेसिंग बेनिफिशियल मैनर में हमको एक बार चेक करने का न्यू टैक्सेशन रेजिम में क्या होगा एंड द ओनली डिफरेंस इज दैट एडिशनल डेप्रिसिएशन इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी अवेलेबल क्योंकि और कोई चैप्टर सिक्स है एक्सेट्रा तो दिया नहीं तो एडिशनल डेप्रिसिएशन डिसअलाउ करके वॉट एवर यू गेट उसके ऊपर एज पर न्यू रेजिम न्यू रेजिम नो दिस इज एन ओल्ड कंपनी दिस इज नॉट अ न्यूली इनकॉर्पोरेटेड कंपनी तो आपको न्यू रेजिम के हिसाब से यू विल हैव टू अप्लाई वन वन फाइव बी डबल एफ उसके हिसाब से यू कैलकुलेट फाइनली डिसाइड विच एवर इज बेनिफिशियल दिस इज हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू अप्रोच योर क्वेश्चन नंबर यानी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टोटल में फोर्टीन है फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन योर सब्जेक्टिव डिस्क्रिप्टिव पार्ट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वी हैव इज ऑफ मिस्टर संजय रेसिडेंट इन इंडिया फिफ्टी फाइव ईयर ही एड एन इंप्रेसिव इन्वेस्टमेंट पोर्टफोलियो वेरियस म्यूचुअल फंड ही रिडीम इज एंटायर म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट पोर्टफोलियो एंड बॉट अ विला इन लोनावला फॉर टू करोड़ टू स्पेंड द रेस्ट ऑफ इज लाइफ देर वाह बेटा जिंदगी हो तो ऐसी हो तो वॉट आर द डिटेल्स बी एल आर ग्रोथ फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट का डेट दिया रिडेमशन विच इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन द 
करंट इयर इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ वन करोर ट्वेंटी लैक्स हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी लैक्स एंड रिडेमशन पर यू एव रिसीव वन फोर्टी फिर आपका सेकेंड ये एबीसी स्ट्रेटेजिक फंड दिया सेम इन्वेस्टमेंट प्राइस एंड रिडेमशन प्राइस मिड कैप फंड इज गिवन ग्रोथ फंड अलग अलग टाइप के म्यूचुअल फंड मार्केट में अवेलेबल होता है सबका आपको डेटा एक एक करके इंडिविजुअली वन बाय वन दिया द फंड स्टेटेड एट वन एंड टू हैव इन्वेस्टेड थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ देर प्रोसीड इन इक्विटी शेयर ऑफ डोमेस्टिक कंपनी वन एंड टू वन एंड टू ये दोनों थर्टी परसेंट इक्विटी में आ, तो अभी आपको समझ में आएगा जो अमेंडमेंट है उसके ऊपर टेस्ट किया ओके एंड द फंड स्टेटेड इन थ्री एंड फोर हैव इन्वेस्टेड सेवेंटी परसेंट इन डोमेस्टिक इक्विटी शेयर ऑफ डोमेस्टिक कंपनी मतलब ये दोनों में सेवेंटी परसेंट इक्विटी फॉर अ फंड टू बी क्लासिफाइड एज इक्विटी ओरियंटेड म्यूचुअल फंड मिनिमम सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट हैज टू बी इन्वेस्टेड इन इक्विटी शेयर एंड दे हैव सेट दैट इन्वेस्टमेंट पैटर्न रिमेन्स अनचेंज ओवर दर मतलब एक बात तो पक्का है कि फंड थ्री एंड फोर बिकम इक्विटी ओरियंटेड म्यूचुअल फंड बट ऑब्जर्व कीजिए प्लीज दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉज ऑन सेकंड डिसंबर ट्वेंटी टू एंड रिडेमशन इज ऑन फिफ्थ जनवरी फिफ्थ जुलाई ट्वेंटी थ्री मतलब जो आपका एबीडी वाला जो फंड हो रहा है दैट इज बेसिकली इफ यू ऑब्जर्व केयरफुल इट इज शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन ऑन इक्विटी ओरियंटेड म्यूचुअल फंड सो दिस इज शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन आपका वन 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 ओके अरे आप समझे दिस वॉज इन्वेस्टेड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड दिस इज टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री दैट इज मोर देन ट्वेल्व मंथ इक्विटी ओरियंटेड में वी हैव टू चेक मोर देन ट्वेल्व मंथ तो जो ये एस बी ए ग्रोथ फंड वाला आपका कैपिटल गेन होगा ये लॉन्ग टर्म होगा इसमें इंडेक्सेशन तो नहीं मिलेगा तो योर गेन इज गोइंग टू बी टेन ओनली बट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वन वन टू है तो ये आपका वन 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 ए का कैपिटल गेन हो गया ये आपका वन वन टू ए का कैपिटल गेन हो गया बट द फर्स्ट टू द फर्स्ट टू इफ यू ऑब्जर्व केयरफुली दे आर थर्टी परसेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट इन ओके इसमें से दिस वॉज इन्वेस्टेड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एंड रिडीम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल नॉन इक्विटी ओरियंटेड म्यूचुअल फंड में वी एफ सी थर्टी सिक्स मंथ जो क्लियरली दिख रहा है कि थ्री ईयर्स मतलब थर्टी सिक्स मंथ क्रॉस हो गया तो ये लॉन्ग टर्म लॉन्ग टर्म डेट ओरियंटेड फंड है करेक्ट तो इसके अंदर तो आपको इंडेक्सेशन मिलेगा एंड दिस विल गो अंडर योर जो नॉर्मल आपका कैपिटल गेन होता है उसके अंदर लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन के अंदर इट इज गोइंग टू बी टैक्सेबल ओके वन वन टू ए में नहीं जाएगा एंड इफ इट डज नॉट गो इन वन वन टू इट विल गो इन वन वन टू बट ऑब्जर्व दिस प्लीज दिस इज दैट अमेंडमेंट वाला प्रोविजन एबीसी वाला म्यूचुअल फंड एज पर अमेंडमेंट अगर आपने अब फ्रॉम दिस ईयर ऑनवर्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट किया फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज इन्वेस्टमेंट इन दिस ईयर ओनली तो है तो ये शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन एंड दिस ईयर ऑनवर्ड्स अगर आपका इन्वेस्टमेंट इन इक्विटी इज नॉट मोर देन थर्टी फाइव परसेंट विच इज द केस यहां पर थर्टी परसेंट है तो इट इज गोइंग टू बी कंसिडर्ड एज शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल एसेट एंड वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू गिव यू एनी टैक्स बेनिफिट तो मतलब ये चार लाख आपका नॉर्मल रेट पर टैक्स होगा सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी टैक्स एज पर वन वन टू शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन This is one one. Uh, this, sorry, this is one one two long term capital gain. This is normal rate वाला short term capital gain. This is one 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 a because ये दोनों तो equity है बस ये short term है less than twelve months और ये long term. तो one 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 a one one two a. You are required to compute the capital gain chargeable to tax. देखो short term में तो होगा नहीं one one two a में नहीं होगा खाली जो सबसे पहला वाला है debt oriented which is more than thirty six months क्योंकि ये जो amendment आया है always short term that applies only for your New fund. So that's basically a test on the amendment, but only the second wala fund is covered in that amendment. The rest of it is very very simple, basic calculation of capital gain which you will be able to manage. And once you go through the solution, of course, okay. Then uh, now we have some upcoming questions which are on the uh, which are theory based questions. Commissioner of Income Tax issued notice to revise order passed by AO under Section one forty three during pendency of proceeding. Commissioner on the basis of material gathered under survey. After issue of first notice, the commissioner issued second notice. The contents of which were different from the first notice. Examine whether it is correct. Okay. Commissioner of Income Tax, first of all, आपको नोटिस देगा कब? Under Section two sixty three. Basically, he is going to take two sixty three का records revision. They have not mentioned. If you observe carefully, okay. But the moment they say commissioner issued an order to uh, a notice to revise assessing officer ka order, it automatically means that we are talking about two sixty three. So two sixty three ke under he first gave you a notice, then he gave you another notice. The contents are different, and therefore because of that unrelated content, it is going to be invalid notice. Next, apka jo न्यू टाइम लिमिट ऑफ 147 का ऑर्डर पास करने के लिए 148 एंड 148 ए का जो लिमिट है एस वी आर अवेयर नाउ इट इज थ्री इयर्स फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ द 
रेलिवेंट असेसमेंट ईयर अनलेस आपका फिफ्टी लैक का लिमिट वो क्रॉस कर रहा है उसके ऊपर क्वेश्चन है ऑन योर री असेसमेंट का कॉन्सेप्ट विच यू विल बी अगेन एबल टू डू वेरी इजिली क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवनटीन इज वेरी वेरी इजी देर इज नो डिफिकल्टी इन डूइंग क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवनटीन ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन एटीन इज ऑन ब्लैक मनी एक्ट जैसे कि आपको पता है कि अभी ब्लैक मनी एक्ट ना इलेक्ट्रिक पेपर तो निकल गया तो ब्लैक मनी एक्ट इज नाउ अ पार्ट ऑफ योर डायरेक्ट टैक्स ओनली दिस इज बेसिकली समवन हुआ इज रिटर्न टू इंडिया अभी ये वैसे मार्च 2013 में इंडिया में आया था बट राइट नाउ ही इज नॉट देर बिकॉज इन अप्रिल टू ही वेंट टू यूएसए एंड परमानेंटली सेटल देर तो इवन इफ ही इज अ नॉन रेसिडेंट करेंटली एट दैट टाइम वेन ही अक्यूमुलेटेड हिज फॉरन अनडिस्कलोज इनकम अगर उस टाइम पे रेसिडेंट है तो ब्लैक मनी एक्ट इज गोइंग टू बी एप्लीकेबल ये उतना ही बेसिकली आपको टेस्ट करेगा बाकी का इफ यू रीड थ्रू द डिटेल्स यूल अंडरस्टैंड ऑफकोर्स नेक्स्ट इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑन एक्सटैंडर्ड है द मोमेंट यू सी एनी आरटीपी और एनी एग्जाम पेपर यूल जनरली फाइंड द क्वेश्चन ऑन यूनिलेटर रिलीफ तो आपको सब सैलरी एंड ऑल दैट इज गिवन देन इनकम फ्रॉम कंट्री ए इज गिवन रेंट फ्रॉम कंट्री ए इज गिवन ये सब आपका कंट्री ए का डेटा दिया एंड This time, this is not unilateral relief because India has a DT double A and tax paid over there is eligible for credit in India. Because tax paid over there is eligible for credit in India, आपको ये clearly बोल दिया. That means it becomes a question on bilateral relief and you will have to solve it as per the DT double A given. So rate of tax in the foreign country is also given to you. Whatever tax you pay there, of course, is going to be eligible. DT double A के ऊपर basic question है. Okay. And the last question is on transfer pricing, advance pricing agreement. Can you roll back? Can be applied to the past year, subject to certain condition, not subject matter of I tax. Income and tax should not be reduced. That year's return should not be late. According to that, we can be applying our advance pricing agreement even to the past year. So basically, they have tried to cover all the varieties. They have tried to cover the amendments also. So uh, most of it is already covered. At the end, I would I want to tell you about uh, two things uh, very very specifically. This is important to. Not uh, subjective questions ना ये बहुत ही आंसर जो understand MCQs I had to discuss in detail I have done that लेकिन अब मेरे को है ना दो चीज आपको clearly बता first let me talk about section fifty four and section fifty four f if you know इन दोनों के अंदर एक amendment आया है that maximum is going to be ten crore but what is that amendment थोड़ा clarity के साथ में I want to tell you that under this the investment in new asset will be considered as maximum ten crore अब देखो 54 में फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा बिकॉज 54 फोर इज वॉट कैपिटल गेन और इन्वेस्टमेंट विच एवज कैपिटल गेन 80 करोड़ रुपए का 80 करोड़ रुपीज इन्वेस्टमेंट यू मेक 75 करोड़ रुपीज तो नॉर्मली वी वुड हैव सेड 80 और 75 फाइव विच एवज बट नाउ वी विल टेक इट एज 80 और 10 विच एवज डोर बट फिफ्टी फोर एफ में क्या होता है एट्टी करोड़ इज ओनली योर गेन एक्चुअली टू मेक दैट जीरो यू हैव टू इन्वेस्ट द नेट सेल कंसिडरेशन तो नेट सेल कंसिडरेशन इज इन्वेस्टेड देन योर फुल कैपिटल गेन इज एक्सम तो अवर कैलकुलेशन इज बेसिकली कैपिटल गेन इन टू इन्वेस्टमेंट अपॉन नेट सेल कंसिडरेशन तो वहां पे इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द न्यूमरेटर विल बी कंसिडरिंग मैक्सिमम टेन करोड़ इट इज नॉट दी एक्सेंशन अमाउंट फिफ्टी फोर में तो क्या है इन्वेस्टमेंट बोल दो एक्सेंशन बोल दो इट डस नॉट मेक एनी डिफरेंस मैथमेटिकली बट फिफ्टी फोर एफ में द डिफरेंस इज दट द इन्वेस्टमेंट अमाउंट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द एक्सेंशन अमाउंट ओके इन्वेस्टमेंट अपॉन एनएससी के प्रपोर्शन में हम करते हैं तो वी विल नॉट टेक द एक्सेंशन एज मैक्सिम ऑफ टेन करोड़ we will consider the investment in new asset as maximum 10 crore that is one thing that i had to tell you guys and the second thing is about 43b i will open my tab and show it to you or ye jo tab mein chart hai na you please save it because this will fine tune your knowledge about the, uh, the, the section 43b ka jo amendment msme se related aaya hai so let me show the tab so under the uh, msme act we are making payment to three types of enterprises micro small and medium based on whatever is there investment in plant and machinery based on whatever is their uh, capital etc they are classified into three types of entities micro small and medium enterprise if you are making any purchases from these enterprises from micro enterprise or a, a small enterprise or a medium enterprise as registered under the msme act then you have to pay them on time government wants that small businesses should be paid on time the micro enterprise the small enterprise the medium enterprise uske liye unhone 43b mein amendment kiya while drafting the amendment they clearly mentioned that By the way, what is 43B? Deduction will be allowed only if payment is done. Deduction will be allowed only if payment. We normally for all the other expenses like indirect taxes, bonus and commission, we get time up to due date of return filing. But in this amendment, it is also said extended time limit not available means you have to make payment up to 31st March. If your MSME payment is outstanding on 31st March, then 
तो एक्सपेंस विल बी डिस ऑफकोर्स नेक्स्ट ईयर जब आप पे करोगे तो इट विल बी अलाउड फोर्टी थ्री भी वही बोलता है यू विल गेट डिडक्शन वेन यू मेक पेमेंट बट राइट नाउ इफ इट इज आउटस्टैंडिंग इट विल बी डिस अलाउड बट टाइम हैज कम टू फाइन ट्यून दैट ओके यू शुड नो दिस Things that you will be making three types of enterprise co payment micro, small, and medium. Medium is amendment में covered ही नहीं है. अगर आप medium enterprise को पैसा नहीं भी देते हो, due basis it will be allowed, 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 allowed to 43B is not applicable. Be clear about this. 43B is not applicable payment to medium enterprise allowed. This whole amendment that payment करोगे then only deduction make payment then deduction payment basis deduction is applicable only if you have made purchases from micro. Supposingly I make purchases from you. So under business, I will have to make you payment. If you are medium enterprise, I will get my deduction even if it is outstanding. Medium is out of discussion. Focus on micro and small. Micro and small के लिए बोला है that you make payment within the time limit of MSME Act. Now this is unfortunate because they are expecting CA final का students to know MSME Act which is not there in our syllabus. But you are knowing it. They want you to know it. So I have to first discuss with you what is time limit under MSME. I made purchases from you. I have to make you payment. You have to be micro and small for this discussion. Medium is out. Uska payment karo ke mat karo. Deduction is allowed. All right. Now, what should be the time within which I should make you payment? If I am making purchases from you, we will do contract. We will do that. I will pay you in this much time. You go and check if there is contract or no contract. If there is no contract, then MSME Act says that pay within fifteen days. Ra, apke aur mere bich mein there is no contract. Pay within fifteen days. But in case there is contract. Then it has to be as per contract. We can have payment terms of twenty days, twenty five days, thirty days, but we can have payment terms of sixty days also. MSME Act बोलता है maximum forty five days. So first check करो medium है क्या? Then forty three be not applicable. Micro and small है तो have be paid within MSME time limit, which is no contract तो fifteen days. Contract है तो as per contract but maximum forty five days. अगर मैंने इस time limit के अंदर pay कर दिया, तो deduction will be allowed. Then it is not outstanding. No, I have honoured the time. Limit. If I am not paid within this time, still go and check. आपने MSME time limit violate किया, no problem. 31st March के पहले पे कर दिया, deduction will still be allowed. You violate MSME time limit, and it is still unpaid till 31st March because extended time limit is not allowed. July, October, November 139 बार. That is not allowed as per this amendment. इस amendment में वो extended time limit नहीं मिलेगा. You have to make payment up to your end. तो इधर I pay within MSME time limit, then also I get deduction. Or I don't pay within MSME time limit, but I pay up to 31st March. Then also deduction will be. If I miss MSME and I also miss 31st March, then it will be deducted. So step by step focus. Payment to medium enterprise deduction is allowed. 43B not applicable. Payment to micro and small if made within MSME time limit. वो क्या है? Without contract, 15 days. With contract, as per contract, but not more than 45. If in that time limit, the payment is done. So again allowed. Not done. Last step. Check. Even if that time is missed. Supposingly I buy from you on first February. No contract. So 15 days. 15 February ke baad mein I have violated MSME. But still if I pay before 31st March I will get deduction. If I don't pay up to 31st March then I will lose my deduction. So my step number one. Micro enterprise not applicable. Deduction allowed. Medium and small if paid within MSME. Sorry, what am I saying? Medium enterprise not covered so always allowed. Medium enterprise outstanding goa then also it is going to be Allowed. Micro and small if paid within the MSME time limit, 15 or 45 days. So allowed. If not paid in this time but paid up to 31st March, again allowed. If not paid in MSME time and not paid up to 31st March, so it will be disallowed. So that is one more thing about 43B that I had to tell you. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this uh, chart because this may help you for later revision purposes. In the screenshot, if you are taking me, then uh, it will become an expensive photograph so kindly google pay some money to me okay all right then ladies and gentlemen boys and girls that was our rtp discussion of ca final may 2024 exam uh, i request you to go through the statutory updates and as far as judicial updates new case laws are concerned that will be done with our regular full course crash course students recording students that will be applicable only for them is applicable to everyone but will be covered for them so thank you so much for watching everyone have a nice time thank you very much bye bye take care